All right, so here we go. So let's talk inflation. Has it peaked? Yes and no. Okay. Energy, in my opinion, has not peaked. We just saw the Dutch gas prices go up 10% since yesterday. Okay. The EU, we talked about it in depth. So for those of you guys who were in with us in the morning call, we talked about how the EU is rationing now. Okay. They passed a, I don't want to call it a law, but they passed a policy that states that they are going to ration and cut consumption by 15% from um, November through March. In other words, they're trying to they're trying to you know cut down on consumption to keep prices down during the winter. Now, does that mean that 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 natural gas is going to stay high all the way up? No, we bought boil after. And if you watch the the video from the other website, you'll know that we we saw boil fell when the Freeport LNG uh, explosion happened. And then it fell again when the Freeport LNG um, pipeline was not allowed to come back on service because they said they need more uh, inspections, right? But then all of a sudden we were like, hey, listen, there's two heat waves coming. This is probably going to come back up. And so obviously, even though the natural gas inventories in the United States, uh, you know, went up, meaning that, you know, supply and demand, the, the price went down, there was still the EU and the U.S. going to need consumption. So we ended up seeing a, a surprise report to the upside. And then, you know, now we're now we're right back up to we had one hundred and ten dollars yesterday. So if you remember two weeks ago, we bought this all the way down at thirty nine dollars. And some of you guys, I sold at eighty one dollars. Some of you guys sold at one ten yesterday. OK, that was almost two hundred percent. It's insane. All right. They are doing a voluntary, a voluntary cap on, on, on energy. OK, 15 percent, you know, reduction voluntary for now. Now, no offense. And this is going to sound political and it kind of is. European countries aren't really known for letting things just be voluntary. You understand what I'm saying? All right. Not necessarily something that they're known for, okay, over time. They have much more control on their population, good or bad. They just have more control, okay, until France starts rioting, okay? Once they bust out the guillotines, uh, then, uh, then, then, you know, then everything changes, okay? So... Uh, until they, they bust out these bad boys, okay? Um, okay, so they're gonna do that. They said voluntary for now, but they will make it mandatory if they need to, okay? Meaning that if prices continue to go up or supply cuts down, it's gonna make it even tighter crunch. They're trying to save up their reserves for the winter. Now, Russia at any moment could fuck them, but they're not going to because they're doing the annexation. Remember what I told you guys when, when, uh, when the, um, uh, the, the Nord Stream came back on and I was like, surprising they brought it back online without any incidents, but they did it the same day they announced they're annexing the south Southeast Donbass region of uh, Ukraine because they knew nobody was going to stop them. It's how it is. No offense. I love the idea of moving from old energy to green energy, but at this point, green energy is not sustainable and the EU is finding that out hard. And they spent 20 years and ungodly amounts of money to get green energy and sustainable reusable energy but even now, it, 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 it can't sustain them at all. They, ha they are literally, they are Russia's bitch right now until somebody else comes in. So Russia could, if anybody, if, if anybody in the EU says anything about Ukraine, whatever, Russia could cut it off. We got a problem. So energy's not out of the way. But why was I saying has inflation potentially peaked? Well, we've seen several reports. First off, Australia came out this morning, surprise inflation decrease. Okay. Now, has inflation, inflation peaked? Depends on what inflation you're looking at. Remember, when you look at CPI and that core inflation, there's hundreds and hundreds of different, different things that are factored in. In the initial run-up, the first year of inflation increases, most of it was used cars. Well, used cars going up hits the inflation report hard, but doesn't really affect everyone's everyday life, right? Especially when everybody was working from home. So it, it can be skewed, but food, energy, and shelter was a big one. Now, why do I say maybe inflation has peaked for now? Wholesale inventories. For those of you guys that are new to this stuff and it's confusing you, bear with me. I, I'll break it down in a way that makes you understand. And even if you don't understand it, you might sound smart at a party, okay? Wholesale inventories came in. Again, increased. Now, why is it, why, why are in, inventories packed and increasing? Because people aren't buying shit anymore. So if you have a surplus of supply and the same or less of demand, prices generally go down. Now, we're also seeing that from several earnings right now. Look at Walmart. Walmart came out, not even earnings, Walmart came out and said, hey, we're cutting our next quarter and our next year guidance. 
We have way too much inventory of food in retail right now. We're going to have to sell the shit out of this. We're going to have to cut costs. We're going to have to sell these for a loss or for very minimal gain. Because people just aren't buying this shit. Food prices up 12 to 15%. Retail up 20, 30%. Gas is so expensive, people aren't even coming to the store anymore. People are saying it's cheaper for them to pay for Amazon Prime and get free shipping than it is to drive to fucking Walmart. Also, Walmart, you know, they have a lot of ground transportation for their inventories. Lots of fuel there. So now, if they've got inventory problems, and we're seeing that all across the board, that means that prices are going to have to come down for them to clear the inventory, especially when it comes to food and shit like that, right? So when we say inflation is peaking, you may see CPI still stay high. And you may say to yourself, but inflation isn't peaking. Inflation's still high. It's still going up. Depends on where that number's coming from. And I'll tell you why. Part of that number right now is shelter, okay? Shelter is ridiculous. What is CPI? That is your, 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 your core, uh, your, this is basically what your inflation is, like the, the consumer price index. How much consumer, you, pay, and index is just a, a, a report, right? So a report of how much people are paying for different things, all right? It's basically, is, is the cost of everything going up or not? Now, the three things that were big in the last report, the last two reports, but especially the last report, was food, which if Walmart... Aldi's and all these others are going to have are having because remember we talked about the wholesale inventory report that just came out if that if that's the case and we start seeing them drop their food prices in order to take an L on their side but in order to 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 get rid of inventory that'll bring the cost of food down right so we talked about food shelter and energy Shel food we've already talked about inventories shelter shelter has been ridiculous the average price of a home was four hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars in America okay 20 years ago, it was 142, all right? Rent, the average rent in America is over $2,000 per month. Some of y'all are paying way less than that. Some of y'all are paying way more than that, but that's the average. That's, that's massive, okay? That means for the, if the, if the medium income in America is around $34,000, that means $24,000 is for shelter, okay? Average rent, average income. Well, sorry, medium and medium. That's not, that's not sustainable, that's why everyone has roommates and shit now, or they move back with their family. But let's talk about a couple things. Shelter. Let's talk with housing. Mortgage applications dropped last week, or no, sorry, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, dropped the most in a single week they had in the most since the 80s. So maybe 40 years ago. I can't remember the exact date. I was, the eight is in my head. I can't remember if it's, I think it was the 80s. Mortgage applications, 20% in one week. Negative. Why is that? Because the market was saturated. Everybody purchased while, while interest rates were low. Prices drove up. Nobody wanted to sell. Everybody started renting it out. Now the renting market's going crazy. But nobody's buying anymore. Because housing market has stayed high and mortgage rates went up and met it. So there's no offset of either prices are high and rates are low or prices are low and rates are high. There's no offset. It's, that is not a buyer's market. So now we're starting to see for the first time in two years... Houses that are on the market stay on the market and drop their prices. This is, this is the highest since 2014 of number of pro properties on the market for 30 days plus lowering their prices. And as interest rates are going up, usually mortgage rates go up. But they're actually dipping right now because there's no, nobody's buying a house that's 80% over, you know, what the value was two years ago while, you know, mortgage rates are up almost 100% higher than what they were purchasing it at. The good news is, is that we're not having a housing crash. Now, a housing crash will put us in the dark ages. So that's an indicator, remember, an indicator that we might have peaked on inflation. Housing might be going down. And if housing goes down, more people are able to buy, less people on the renting market. And if more people buy and they decide to rent it out, either they become, they, they no longer are a renter or there's more inventory to rent out, meaning competition will drive down prices so there's shelter energy stock you just told me that the eu is about to get fucked and go into a blackout this winter that's not what i said but energy is not just the energy to heat your home oil and gas oil is down and has been hovering around 100 dollars a barrel it's gotten down to 95 now that's a lot of money compared to where it was two years ago but compared to 150 dollars a barrel this summer which everybody was thinking much lower Gas is still ridiculously high, but gas is down about 65 cents na uh, 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 nationally compared to where it was last month, which means more people are likely to drive, 
or people who are already driving now have more money in their pockets than they did a month ago, which means they can now save that money, invest that money, or spend that money. So technically, and this is just one idiot with a whiteboard, the three major things are seeing a little bit of chink in that armor, a little crack in that, uh, in that wall, which leads me to believe as an investor, we may be peaking on inflation. And if we are peaking on inflation, that means that the Fed can maybe drag down or be a little bit more dovish or go real hawkish to end a year and then actually cut rates next year slightly, maybe 25 basis points at a time, because they don't want rates at 3.5%. They can't have that because if it stays at 3.5% for a long period of time, then money's too expensive. Nobody's spending money and economies fucking crash, right? So you have to battle inflation while also not taking the economy. So if this plan that they put in place continues to show a bit of a peak in inflation and, and maybe a dip, then they can go more dovish to the end of the year or wait to end the year and then go dovish and maybe cut rates next year. And as an investor, I say to myself, wait, employment is increasing. Inflation is decreasing. GDP hopefully is either flat or slightly up on the forecast. And rates are going to peak and go down potentially. That makes me bullish. And that makes me want to buy these dips. And makes me want to invest. Because once we get these things out of the way, we're back on track. And so you're saying to yourself, Stocky, if there's all this negative news, why, are, why is the market propped up? Why is the market almost at 400 again? Shouldn't SPY be at 280? Didn't Clavington tell me it was going to 220? Because... This is a long-term game. This is an investment, not a fucking trade, guys. People that are putting big money in these things, they're looking, they're, these are hedge funds. These are people's retirement. This is long-term shit. There's a difference between a, a trade and an investment. Trading, oh, well, I think the market's still gonna go down in the next six months. Okay. I think that the, the, the economic indicators are showing me that we might start evening out. We might start getting back into a bull run over the next couple of years. People are buying. 